the season. The Avalanche in the desert in Arizona to face the Phoenix Coyotes. All told, they'll face each other three times. Two more times in Denver later this season. Two clubs that are playing well, the Coyotes and the Avalanche. Let me look at the tonight's Ford starting lineup. Peter, boy, you talk about a couple of goaltenders that are having terrific seasons. Here we go tonight. Both coming off wins. Mike Smith in his last 15 games, 11, 1, and 3. For Simeon Varlamov, who will be going for the Avalanche tonight. 14 starts, 11 times for the Avalanche, two goals or less, including a one-goal performance he allowed last game against the Chicago Blackhawks. This should be an interesting matchup because on the other side of it, they have faced a ton of shots, both of these goaltenders this season. Well, we saw Barlamov, Peter, on the, the Tuesday night, the, that game against Chicago, lightning quick reflexes all night long. It was amazing. He really was to talk of we talked to players, we talked to coaches, everybody speaking about how well he played. And the Blackhawks were enormously impressed with how he played that game. All right, here we go. The Coyotes and the Avalanche. Jan Hada steps up for the puck. Lost it right in front of the Avalanche bench. Both teams trying to get a hold of the puck. Finally, it is sent in by Antoine Vermet. And behind the Avalanche cage, played around the boards by defenseman Eric Johnson, and the puck comes out to center ice. It back towards Mike Smith, one of the best puck handlers in the National Hockey League. We get a chance later. We'll show you. He has scored a goal. Actual goal was scored this season. Pass to center ice. Coyotes on the move. Vermet long pass. Botka shot. And that was a hard one. Whistled wide. Turned back behind the net. Around into the corner. Avalanche are on it. Brought to center ice by McKinnon. He's able to push the puck into the Coyote zone. Reverse back behind the net. Cut off. Jamie McGinn for Colorado. Plays it back to the point. Corey Sarch, who did not play in the game against Chicago, sent the puck around the boards. Comes back to the point. Benoit sends one to the front. Knocked down with a glove by one of the Coyote players. Lifted out to center ice. for Verbata, the former avalanche, settles the puck down. He walks in, then shoots the puck wide of the net, and that'll circle out to center ice. Pass across for another former Avalanche, defenseman Derek Morris. Stopped behind by Varlamov, the Avs goaltender. Trying to clear it around the board, but it got cut off. Hansel was having a very good year. Heard Dave Tippett say that he really has been a real key for this team. He's, he's a big guy, and he's got to play against some big, strong centers in his division. You got Thornton, you got Kopitar, you know, you got Getzlaff. Getzlaff. Yep. So he is a big guy, and he's leading the team in scoring this year, which is also so important for this Phoenix club. Got an icing call. There's the whistle. Faceoff coming back in the Avalanche zone. I had a chance, a, a nice chat this morning with Patrick Waugh, one of the most interesting guys to talk to about hockey, and his 15-5 and five to start this, this NHL season has been the talk of hockey. And Dave Tippett, Mike, there is just no question, as respected a coach as there is in the NHL, for what he's done with his club, they, they were on the move so many times, he kept them together. That shot from the point comes wide to the net. Shane Doan, what a centering pass, shot, big save by Varlamov. So the first real test of the game for Varlamov, and he was equal to the challenge. Smith makes a stop, and the rebound comes across to the near side board. But Shane Doan, what a setup right in front of the net for David Moss. Doan, 10 goals this season, six of them have come on the power play. Moss threw that in front, and Varlamov cut it off and grab that with the glove to get a face-off in the avalanche zone. So. Mike, as big as Varlamov was the entire game, I thought the first period against Chicago was the key. The avalanche were outshot 17-8, to and yet they came out of that first period up 3-0, especially an early penalty kill for the avalanche where Varlamov set the tone for the Avs. Jeff Halpern taking the draw for the Coyotes. And for the avalanche... Mark Andre Cleish, 24 for Colorado. Right off the drop, into the corner, Cleish for Colorado. Being checked, held there against the boards. The puck squirts free, ball on the end boards, dashing after it, picked up. Ball on the end boards by Kyle Chichura, centering pass. And Alfred's chance got blocked. Brad Malone, pushed the puck across the ice. And Bordolo tips it in, Malone going after the puck. Comes behind the net. Malone in the second game this season with the Avalanche called up from Lake Erie. 
led injury to Matt Duchesne. And it's been reported on Tuesday that there was some hope that Duchesne was going to come on this trip, skate here in Phoenix, and maybe even play in Los Angeles. Well, Sherman not quite ready. He did not make the trip. So no chance of playing in Los Angeles and kind of just wait and see and hopefully getting better and able to play for the Avalanche soon. So Brad Malone getting an opportunity. Second game of the Avs this season. Botker for Phoenix. His shot gets blocked. And another block. Benoit trying to clear, but that was flagged down by the Coyotes. A bounce in the low slot taken by Sarch of the Avalanche. Played off the glass to the point. That shot right on. And the save made by Varlamov. And that shot by Ekman Larson. Peter, it's interesting how things can start to build and you start hearing talk and reading things and listening and Ekman Larson getting some early season talk about the Norris Trophy, which goes to the league's best defenseman. Yeah, and he's just a young kid. He was the same draft as, Mich as Matt Duchesne. He was taken sixth overall by Phoenix. Mike, he can, he can, he can simply do it all for Phoenix. Harry Johnson for Colorado. The puck worked free from him, centered out in front, and it just skimmed off the side of the net. That may have really helped the Avalanche there, because that centering pass was right on target for Verbata before he hit the side of the net. Handles pass. Kicked off the skate. Quick pass towards Verbata. Overshot on the pass. And again, it comes back. It's an icing call on Phoenix. I'm just talking to the Avalanche players. And one thing they did say, the game against Chicago set them up for this game because the Blackhawks have that are tied with Phoenix as far as most points from the defense. And Michael, you don't do that unless you're jumping up into the play, unless you're involved, unless you're staying in, you're cycling down low. So that game against Chicago may have, you know, in a funny sort of way, help them prepare for this game. And you're looking at Yandel, 16 points. We talked about Ekman Larson, he's got 16 points. And we know what the Derek Morris can do. He has 10 points in just 14 games for Phoenix. And he's still got a, just a rocket from the point when he shoots. Race for the puck. Tyson Berry coming off a strong game. And got called back from uh, Lake Erie. He had started the season with the Avalanche. Sent down. Called back up. Got a chance to get in the lineup against Chicago. And produced. Produced enough that he's still in the lineup. And Nick Holden, who's been playing so well, is the healthy stretch in this game. I mean, they had a couple of assists, Mike, and points will keep Tyson Berry in the lineup. They, I mean, that's part of what he has to bring for the Avs. And the Avs, Peter, only had one power play chance during that game, but he was impressive. He had a couple of great chances. I talked to him afterwards, and he said, man, I thought I was going to get one there. They let me walk right in and take the shot. Don't. Moss, then, for Phoenix, sends it around the board. Bouncer to the side of the Avalanche net. Well, we were talking about maybe seeing a lot of shots in this game. We, first five and a half minutes, two for the Coyotes, just one for the Avalanche. Don't hook the puck into the corner. Mike Ribeiro signed as a free agent in July by this Coyotes team. And it really was an indication with new ownership. The team had been owned by the league for a while, new ownership, and they signed Ribeiro, shot through some traffic, deflects to the corner. Bouncer up the boards. Parento had a big goal for the Avalanche against Chicago, able to clear the puck, and Smith immediately snaps that puck at the center. Ribeiro and will lob it into the corner for the Coyotes. Boy, the Coyotes come at it in a hurry. Bounce by Malone out in the center. Peter, they really like, like a lot like Chicago. They will attack the puck, don't they? They attack the puck, and you see Smith, like a third defenseman, he set that whole, uh, that whole play up by a quick out in the pass to the far blue line. Offside, Coyotes. We're in the first period in Glendale, Arizona. No score between Phoenix and Colorado. Michael, if you're grading out the first quarter for the Avalanche, I think offense and defense both have to get an A. The Avalanche are the only club in the NHL in the top five in goals for and goals against. You look at all the great starts to some of these clubs around, especially the Western Conference, and they're the only club in a very elite spot in the NHL. It just makes it hockey sense, doesn't it? You're in the top five. You're going to have a good year if you're in both offense and defense playing well. Like if you can end up, sense. Yeah, if you can end up in the top ten in both, the Avalanche will make the playoffs. That shows you how strong being in the top five is. Coming out of the corner in the Phoenix zone, Rostislav Plesla. Out 
to center ice. Avalanche gets the puck first. It's Stastny. He slices it off the boards. Return back into the Avalanche zone, and Stastny makes the outlet pass for Jan Hayda. Tipped in. Morris got it back to the Coyotes. Brought in down the wing. Kale Bodker had some good games against the Avalanche. Shot by Vermette. Save made by Varlamov. Vermette coming out of the corner. Staying on him. Mitchell. Poke check. Somehow Vermette came up with the puck. Fired it back, but Morris had left the zone. Has the puck in the neutral zone. Yandel has the pass. Coyote's moving the puck. And shot in towards Varlamov. He elects just to hold the puck for a faceoff. Michael, look at this. This is absolutely remarkable. Of the top ten clubs in the NHL, the top eight are all in the Western Conference. They're separated by three points. The reason for that, Michael, is the dominance of this group of eight. Mike are 58, 17, and 10 against the Eastern Conference. So they're, I mean, you, when you look at it, how close is that? The Avalanche, with the start they've had, are in eighth spot in the West. The Avalanche, like a lot of teams in the West, have had a lot of games against those Eastern Conference teams. Wraparound try by Hansel. Comes wide. Then fired through the crease. Shot to the net. Saved by Varlamov. Picked up by Benoit for Colorado. Off the glass and out. They have not hesitated to shoot once by coming into the zone. From all over. Pass to Bice for Verbata. Shot in. Angles off the corner, again it the Avalanche, able to wave it to center ice, gets the puck to Landeskog, backhands it in to the Phoenix zone, snapped around the boards, Gennon, doing his best to hold it in, he does, then the shot by Landeskog, that's stopped by Smith, rebound comes to the Avalanche, centering pass for Landeskog, cut off in front of the net, brought up ice, and flipped down the slot towards Yandel by Kennedy. That bounced away, and the Avalanche get possession. They transition. Boy, back and forth right now. Both teams getting some chances. Backhanded in. Yandel will take it for the Coyotes. Mike, I watched McKinnon. That whole play coming back defensively. He is the, he is the guy that got back to the Avalanche and got that puck and skated it out of the zone. Stone shot. Pat save. Rebound. Sent out in front by Ribeiro, but that banks back to the boards. To the point. Slammed across by Runblad. And back into the neutral zone. Runblad. He gets run at by Bordelow. Pass comes back. Runblad. Forced towards the boards. And shoots the puck in wide. Icing against Phoenix. Here it is, Michael. Watch number 29, Nathan McKinnon. He's going to be right on the right side of your screen as you're watching. He was back, was a three on two, and suddenly he takes it. And what does he do? He doesn't pass it out of the zone. Mike, he has that skating ability to skate the puck out of the zone, even at the end of a shift. Uh, it's you get to the red line, now you're in the safe zone. Now in the safe zone, they can all change, and, and the play's dead. It was a three on two that suddenly was in the other team zone, and an avalanche change. Johnson's pass behind the net for McGinn. Comes out of a pack. Scooped into the corner for Parento. Centering pass, shot by Stastny, and the save by Smith. Best scoring chance for the Avalanche. The Avs got another good bounce there. Stastny, though, just could not get that one by Smith. Still scoreless here in the first. Well, Paul Stastny, who has been, Mike, consistently solid. And borderline great for the Colorado Avalanche all season long. Just gets another opportunity, working hard down low. And this... This is a, a reconstructed line since Duchesne has gone down with injury, but they played well. McKinn and Parento on that line with Stastny. Bodker's long pass had a man streaking through the neutral zone. Stastny broke that up. Hooked across. Yandel, rink wide pass. Bottom of the circle for Vermette. Bodker crashes into the corner. Comes out of the corner with the puck. Threw it out in front. And taken away for Bodker. Making some things happen. Up down the near side to buy Talbot. He took a check from Morris. Morris pass. Brought to center ice by the Coyotes. And lifted in by Bodker. Sarks. Pushed up against the corner boards in the avalanche zone. 9.30 left first period. No score in our game. 
Uh, oh, that's going to yeah. be a belt. Sarge trying to send it off the glass and get it out of the zone, but it cleared the glass, so he is headed to the box. When we return, no score, but the Coyotes will be on the power play. Mike, nothing yet for either one of these hockey clubs. 0-0 halfway through this first period. But, Michael, how important has the first goal been this season for the Avalanche? Well, they scored it 13 times, and they've won all of those games. But, Michael, inside of those games, there's been 20 Avalanche games. The team that has scored the first goal is 18-2. So this is a key power play for the Avalanche to kill off. Coyotes, sixth of the league. Overall in the power play, third best on home ice. That's 17 power play goals for the season. Six of them by Shane Doan. Doan spins, moves in over the line. Quick pass to Cross, Ekman Larson. Fed back for Yandel. His shot comes wide of the net. Slapped that by Gennon, and the Avalanche defenseman able to clear the zone. And like you talked about the power play for Phoenix, it's almost 30% at home. Corey Sarch in the penalty box. A delay a game penalty as he shot the puck over the glass in his own zone. So the first power play belongs to the Coyotes. Halfway through that search penalty. Handle to the red line. It's the Kalings. He gets free. Makes the pass back towards the near side point. Bounced her down the board for Verbata. Abs right on it. Hita got a stick on it. And the puck does eke out the center. Handled by Bodker. Puck across. And then the pass hit to Mitchell in the skate. Has have done a good job on this penalty kill. Bodker. Drop it behind the net. Run black. Skate to center ice. Push the puck across for Michael Stone. And the Avalanche hold things up at the blue line. And get in the way of a pass that hit Talbot and goes out of play. Well, some good penalty killing here by Colorado. Well, solid penalty killing. Max Talbot, great to see him sort of break into the scoring ranks for the Avalanche last game. His first two points, both on assists last game. But, Mike, I was talking to him on, on the plane yesterday, and I didn't realize his rookie year, I guess there's two players he played with, Sidney Crosby and Mario Lemieux. He, had, he was a rookie that year, Crosby's rookie season, and also Mario Lemieux. And like everybody. So that's your said, rookie year go. So this is the talent level here in the this, NHL, this is, huh? Okay, this is how they play this game. <laughs> you know, Crosby had over 100 points. Mario, and I was talking to him about, you know, Mario. He said, I said, is it what it appears, that presence? He said, it's unreal. He walked in the locker room, and he would be, you know, he'd come in, and he'd stand up, and he was so big. He said, it just dominated the room. Well, we get a moment here, Peter. You got to tell the Mario Lemieux, Patrick Waugh story. That, oh, yes, that, absolutely. That Waugh told you this morning. Great story. Seven and a half minutes to go. We are in the first period. No score in this one. Ten seconds left in the starch penalties. The Coyotes are on the power play. That puck lanced off of Varlamov and out of play. So I'm asking Patrick Wall this morning, do you happen to remember who scored the first goal against you? And Patrick said, yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I remember him because he scored the first and second goal <laughs> against me. And I go, well, and I'm thinking, who was it? He goes, number 66. There's only one, number 66. 66, Mario Lemieux. He scored the first two goals, and they're down 2 nothing. But they came back to win it 3-2. That's the part that he was, that's the part he enjoyed the most, for sure. Out of the box is Sarch. Well, if you're going to give up a goal, the first one, that's no shame in that one. <laughs> Mary Lemieux scoring it on you. <laughs> we got an icing call on Phoenix. Luxury has an address. Cody Lexus invites you to see the full line of Lexus all-weather drive sedans and luxury utility vehicles for 2014. They're available at Cooney Lexus of Greenwood Village, now open at Bellevue and I-25, and at Cooney Lexus in Colorado Springs. Well, the Coyotes, Peter, two minutes of power play time, had just one shot on net, not real threat. There's a chance from the point by Eric Johnson, just sort of floated in on Smith. He makes the save. Mike, watch this shot by Eric Johnson. I was talking to Patrick Waugh this morning. He was saying that other than one-timers, you do not have time to take that big slap shot anymore. And you're going to see more and more avalanches taking wrist shots from the point, just getting it through. Exactly what Johnson did right there. Mike, if he winds up, man stands in front of it and is blocked. Great play by Johnson. 
Stassi take the face off. Got Parento begin with him. Parento turns and shoots. Smith had to make the save. Pass behind the net. Centered for Parento, but it sailed past him. At the center comes Coy the coming the Coyotes. Dropped along the far side. Shot by Lomoff against the post is able to make the save and then cover the rebound for a faceoff. Is this different kind of a game than you would expect to see here tonight? No, not really. I, you know, I, I think for Phoenix, what we're seeing is why they're getting so many goals. They're putting the puck on the net all the time, forcing the defenseman for the Avalanche to spin and try to find those rebounds. Dave Tippett's club, one thing they've done so far, they've got that high slot guy that's had a couple of shots. The Avalanche have blocked them, but they've been open. Thing that Coach Wam was telling us this morning that they will crash the net. They go after those rebounds. They they shoot and they're everyone's driving to the net. Moss trying to flick it around the boards. Ribeiro knocks down the puck. Stick handles his way to the boards. Mike Ribeiro passes. Ends up coming behind the net. Doan's got it to Moss. Moss, Doan, Ribeiro, top line for the Coyotes. Save made by Varlamov. Poked by O'Reilly. And the puck tapped back in. Delay offside on the Coyotes. Allows McKinnon to get to the red line and shoots the puck into the Coyotes zone. Smith chopped it around to the corner. McKinnon put it behind the net. Immediately grabbed by Stone of Phoenix. Clears the puck to center ice. Six minutes left in the first third. No shoot. Things not really gotten started for either club yet, but Mike. The one thing about Phoenix, they were off for four days, so sometimes you just be a little rusty early. Borlo scoops the puck to the corner. Well, they had a very busy schedule, and that was really their first big break in the schedule. Puck chased down. Johnson has it for Colorado. Circle in the net. Trying to make a pass and hit a Phoenix skate. Handle threw it out between the circles. Leash. Really sends it up the boards and got the puck out. Icing, though, is the call on the Avalanche. Well, Mike, the last meeting between these two clubs was last year. The Avalanche were able to send it in overtime. Good effort by Phoenix. And then, and then there's the shootout. There's some great saves by Barlamov. Duchesne and P.A. Parento locks it up for the Colorado Avalanche. Don't watch the hit. That's so smooth, it's unreal, isn't it? <laughs> it just looks so easy when he does it. Johnson for the avalanche, slaps the puck to center. David Runblad. The pass, and sent across Klesla. He's in, and shoots the puck high to the corner. Mitchell tapped it up the slot with the Coyotes. They're right on it. Kept in play by Halpert. Barry through the Avalanche. Moving four on two, developing for the Avalanche. Mitchell looking for a play. He ends up shooting and got off a good snapshot. They glanced off to Smith and actually ricocheted all the way back to the neutral zone. Mitchell's shot underrated. Oh, absolutely, because I'll tell you right now, Mike Smith was sort of moving that shoulder. He got stung with that one. Yandel for the Coyotes. Finds Derek Morris. Back to Keith Yandel. Long cross ice pass for Bodker. Drops it in the Avalanche corner. Starts for the Avs. Pushed against the boards by Vermette. Bodker. It's hit by Benoit for the Avs. Vermette in the corner for the Coyotes. Trying to work his way free, get a little space. Makes a hand off the shot. Skimmed off the leg pad of Varlamov. Held at the point. Runblad shot. Dropped in front of the net after it was blocked by Sarge. Kept in by the Coyotes. Runblad slapped it across the rink. Clink hammer. Vermette. And the puck dribbles off the uh, shelf. Spun around the boards. And you got a penalty. Referee out in the neutral zone making a call. The referee Dave Jackson saw something he uh, deems a foul. And We'll come back with the Avs shorthanded again. Did you know? Brought to you every game by Stevenson Automotive. Which of these players did not play for Winnipeg before they moved to Phoenix? Shane Doan, 
Tamo Solani or Jeremy Roenick? You can text your answers to 53548 to win some tickets. And we'll get you an answer in our third period. Power play chance number two for the Coyotes. Andre Benoit, high sticking penalty. Called at 16.32. Short hand again for Colorado. And they did an outstanding job on the penalty kill. Allowing just one shot for the Coyotes earlier in this period. We're scoreless in the first. Power play chance for Phoenix. Vermette. Scoop the puck back behind him. As make a steal. Then Hayda steps up. Long shot right on for Smith. Lobbed out to center. Look at this. The puck comes down for Doan. Pass in the slot. The Avalanche were making a change. There was nobody out there for the Avalanche. But that puck kind of fumbled a little bit on Doan. He had to twist to get control. By that time, the Avalanche reacted, got the player out there that they wanted to. And not very often you see a 100-foot aerial by the goaltender. Wow. Hey, pretty impressive. Smith dangles back behind the net. 50 seconds left in Benoit's high-sticking penalty. Glove to buy Varlamov. He'll hold it for a face-off. Well, he became the 11th player or goaltender to do this, Mike, or is he a player? Is he a player or is he a goaltender? Against Detroit in October, Mike, it looked when you, it was so close. It was exactly one <laughs> and the second. Before it went in, we all, I think we all remember back to Patrick Waugh when he had the one that, Mike, what was it, the second late in Philadelphia? Oh, yeah. Oh. Then his reaction when he, oh. when he, he just <laughs> the anguish. <laughs> He, Patrick Waugh accomplished about any, everything you could do as a goaltender, except for that. Run black. Walked right in. Slides the puck in front. Had it blocked. Played back to the far side. Boy, the Coyotes crashed the net for a chance there. Shot saved by Varlamov. Batted at another save by Varlamov. The puck squeezed free. Run black. Sneaks in from the point. 15 seconds left in Benoit's penalty. To the corner for Hansen. Botker inching his way in to the circle. His pass in the slot. Shot goes up high. Bounce through the side of the net. Benoit's out. Avalanche killed that penalty. But there were more chances there for Phoenix than in their first power play opportunity. But the Avs did stop them. And it's still scoreless here in the first. Well, in watching this particular sequence, this is what Patrick Waugh was talking about earlier. The big bodies in front. The puck is then going to go back to the point, the end of this sequence, and people in front, that just went up over top. Trying to look through Hansel, like 6'6", 230 pounds. I mean, trying to find him, you got to, you have to make the perfect decision. Do you go up high over his shoulder, which is almost impossible? That forces you to go down low to try to find that puck. All right, it was with a couple of shots during that power play opportunity. Better chances than they had in the first chance, first power play chance. And the Avalanche still do the job on the penalty kill. Back to even strength with Buck carried in by Landeskog. Pass, top of the circle. Johnson, down low. O'Reilly got poke checked. We're in the final minute of the period. Shot by Landeskog, had it blocked. The handle, put that one in the hand. He's hurting a little bit as he goes to the uh, Phoenix bench. Long pass off the stick of O'Reilly. Flicked across by Morris. Long pass towards Verbata. Benoit for the half stepped up. Then the quick pass over the line for McKinnon. Got poke checked and then a sweep as he tried to get around Derek Morris. Pass up the ice for Verbata. 25 seconds to go in the period. Bounced in. Benoit after it. Dropped it in the corner. Thrown out in front, Sarch took it away. Now skate to center ice. That gets cut off. Pass to the blue line. Flip to the far side, Hansel. And the puck ends up going out of play. And then a little skirmish along the far boards. For the Coyotes, that is Jeff Halford. See Jay, or that's uh, P.A. Parento. Excuse me, that actually is uh, Tim Kennedy for the Coyotes. Recently just called up. For Phoenix. I'm just watching a little push on Parento right there. The avalanche. Felt what? The, the puck had already gone out of play and 
little hit after uh, it's been a rather quiet first period that way. There haven't been a lot of big hits. You got both clubs have big bodies, but there haven't been an awful lot of big hits. It's sort of this game is sort of feeling itself out. But Mike, it looks like the Avalanche again are going to have a scoreless first period against. They are the best defensive club in the league in the first period, where they've only allowed nine first period goals. Yeah, they've outscored their opponents 20 to nine. The good news is they have, didn't give up a first period goal, but they weren't able to score one themselves. So we're 0-0 zero, zero at the end of the first. Good period overall for the Avs? Just, it was okay. You know, I, I, they didn't get a whole lot going offensively. Didn't really test Smith that often. But the good thing was, Barley good again. Penalty killing perfect. They were two for two. And Varlamov with 15 saves in that first period. And so we've got a scoreless. First 20 minutes of hockey in Phoenix. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, our Toyota Intermission Report. Avalanche, Coyotes, we're still looking for that first goal. We played 20 minutes. Coyotes had a couple of power plays, but it's 0-0 after we've had one period of play here in Phoenix. Good period so far? Well, I mean, for the Avalanche, you kill off a couple of power plays. They haven't got themselves going offensively yet. They need to put more pressure on the Phoenix defense. All right, we've got a uh, question for you. This is uh, Ask the Analyst at Altitude.tv, and you can... Uh, Send it in, brought to you by Colorado Lottery. And, Peter, when you look at the winning percentage among teams in the National Hockey League, Avalanche are second. But we've got a question from a viewer tonight and wants to know about maybe changing the way the standings are done and the points are given out. This is Jonathan H. who's asking this question. Peter, should there be a change in the current system? Is Jonathan's a... Uh, situation presentable? Mike, it would be impossible for me to believe, when you look at this, that the Avalanche would have 45 points after 20 games. The numbers of points that teams would, could possibly get over the course of the season would be so big. I think the, there's two problems in the National Hockey League. One, into overtime, way too many shootouts. It's become a gimmick. As far as I'm concerned, it's way too often games are decided by that. And I am still firmly of the belief that if you have to win or lose, it should just be that. There should not be a point for a tie. They know that you lose the game in overtime. It should be 100%. You get two points for a win, zero points for a loss of any kind. Because I, I know firsthand, when it gets to a shootout, the, there are 12 players on each side who know they're not going to be involved in the shootout. The game is over. So now they're just watching like everybody else. This is a team game. You win and lose the team. I don't care if you be more four on four or three on three, whatever. Even though you are using a gimmicky thing, three on three, it's still your team, and in my mind. Let me see if, I, if I'm clear on this, and I think I agree with you. If you win, no matter what fashion, two points. You lose, no matter what fashion, no, no, points. no points. And then it's, boy, it is pretty clear then There's for fans no. to be able to follow it. Shot by Barry, and that one a hit. Smith and goes wide, and we've got a penalty being called. We're 25 seconds into the second period. Scoreless game. The Coyotes had two power play chances in the first period, and now it's the Avalanche. Phoenix number 26, turn. minor penalty, cross checking. You can hear it's a cross checking penalty. Michael Stone going to the box, Avs going on the power play. It's sort of a funny play. We saw Cody McLeod sort of wincing as he went off. Well, the shot hit off of Cody McLeod, but it was Talbot that was knocked down in front of the net. McKinnon, Parento, Mitchell, O'Reilly, and Benoit on this power play to start things for the Avalanche. Nice pass. Oh, a chance. Mitchell scores! Six seconds into the power play in the Avalanche, who have not lost a game this year when they've scored the first goal of the game. Get it done on the power play. And John Mitchell, that's a two-game goal-scoring streak for him and a 1-0 lead for the Avs. Well, sort of a, a bad read off the faceoff by the Phoenix Coyotes. You watch, McKinnon and Hansel get tied up, and all of a sudden, the puck's going to bounce free, and Hansel just skates away from McKinnon. And all of there, he's wide open. He puck goes back to Mitchell. And as you said, Mike, there's a guy who was snake bit for so long, but now goals in back-to-back -back games. Parento, just a nice chip pass to McKinnon, and this sort of a 
interesting group on the power play. Comes up with a, yeah, with a, with a big first goal. Uh, uh, saying the names, the unit out there, I, I think that's the first time I've seen that yep. bison together on the power play. So the Avalanche get the goal on the power play. Well, the Avs got it done. They scored. Lucky winner will get tickets to an upcoming game. If you'd like a chance to win, if the Avs score on power play, you can register at afwonline.com slash altitude. Talbot into the corner for McKinnon. Trying to come out in front. What a move! And then the save by Smith. Rebound comes up the boards and tipped out in the center. There you can see that confidence continuing to grow for McKinnon as he is doing things. Peter, there's that confidence growing for McKinnon. And he just danced by that defenseman. And believe me, here's what's happening around the NHL. Defensemen around the league are seeing these moves and they're going, oh my goodness. Now they got Duchesne, now they got this kid. I, you know, and the reputation for the Avalanche is starting to grow as far as the skill they've got up front. A well, power play goal by John Mitchell. 32 seconds into the period. McKinnon did pick up an assist, so did Parento. McKinnon, now with 10 assists this season. Of all the players in the lineup tonight for the Avalanche, Peter, he's got the most assists on the Avalanche. Those are whom are playing tonight. And he just missed on scoring that goal coming out of the corner. The, you can just see how close he is to breaking out as far as the goals go. For Parento, it's eight assists and 15 points. McKinnon has said 10 assists, 13 points this year. Hayda winds and fires, and the glove saved by Smith. A lot of people, Mike, scouts in the crowd, are the first time they're seeing Nathan McKinnon as he comes into the National Hockey League. He sits atop the assist by rookies. He's got 10 so far this season, Mike, and again, it's just it's just the nature of how he carries himself between games. He loves to practice. He's out there forever. He and Ryan O'Reilly are always the last guys to leave the ice, and the man is just likes the game. And Patrick Law had him out there to start the first power play chance of the game for the Avalanche. Four to low. Pushed by Klesla. Bouncing puck. Back to the... Phoenix zone to the Avalanche. 13 and 0 this season when they score the first goal of the game. We played three minutes in the second period. Phoenix with a chance, stopped by Barlamov, and then the net pushed free, and that stops the action. But again, Barlamov standing strong, making the big save. Friend. Francois Lair, the, the Avalanche's goaltending coach, is on this trip. And as the rest of the club, there's an optional skate this morning for Patrick Waugh's club. But as, as the other players were skating down at the other end, Mike, he was working on little plays like this down low with Barlama. It was, you know, hit, covering the puck down low, making sure he's solid. And it's a perfect example of it right there. Talbot will have to take the faceoff for the Avs after Mitchell is tossed out of the faceoff circle. Does so against Vermette. One by Vermette. To Morris. Shot. Missed it. Comes off the boards and diving and covering. Varlamov is on the puck before the Coyotes could get to it. Mike, you mentioned it in the first period. Derek Morris, who, who Avalanche fans will remember, came from Calgary to Colorado before coming over to Phoenix. He's had a couple of stops in around the league, Boston, New York, but back here now in and playing so well for Phoenix. Has the bomb. And just the bomb from the point. And they set that play up perfectly. Another draw in the Avalanche zone. This time the Avalanche are able to control. Pushed ahead to the red line. Sent in by Talbot. McLeod scored his first goal of the season against Chicago Tuesday. After the puck in the corner. Mitchell turns, whips the puck around the boards, and off the stick. Of the cloud behind the avalanche net, crossed out in the center. Pass up ice for McLeod. 
deep into the Phoenix zone. Morris will retrieve the puck. It's a little room to skate. Maneuvers out the center. Fires a pass ahead for Bodker. Plays it off the board. Vermette charges to the corner with Johnson. Vermette played it along the end boards. And McKinnon sees the loose puck. He's after it. Turn it back behind the Avalanche net. 16 minutes left in the second period. 1-0 Avalanche power play goal. Scored by John Mitchell. Fourth of the season from McKinnon and Parento at 32 seconds. For the Avalanche, their 12th power play goal of the season. This is the only game this season that the Avalanche will be here in Arizona. Two more games to be played between these teams, both of them in Denver. Hansel shot, and that one hit. Varlamov and comes wide. Now up to 19 shots in this game for the Coyotes. To the point. That shot. Comes wide to the net, around the board. Zekman Larson pinched in. He has the puck. Back towards the point for Bottom. Winds. And he breaks his stick on the shot. And the Avalanche are then able to clear the puck. Without the center ice by Stone. Bouncing puck back behind the Phoenix net. Zekman Larson will take it. Trips the pass into the corner. Zekman Larson. Makes the pass up ice, deflected into the AM zone. Play continues on. Varlamov sends it to the corner. Reverse back behind the net. Centering pass shot by Yandel. And that one got blocked in front of the net. Back to center. Stone. Try to hold the puck, but Stasty stepped up. Had it for a moment. Flicked away. And carried to center ice by Shane Doan. The handoff to Ribeiro. Pulls up as he comes over the line. Barry came up to challenge him at the blue line. Coyotes keep the puck in the avalanche zone. Smash back up. Held in. Shot by Yandel. Boy, he uncorked the shot there that went wide. Doan will try. That gets blocked by Gannon. And back to center ice. And again, we see that forward for Phoenix in the high slot. Get the good chance. Long pass by Nate Gannon. Of the abs off of McGinn's stick. Played the center for Doan. His pass broken up. Bordelow pushed the puck back into the Colorado zone. They have one goal and 11 shots. Coyotes, no goals, 20 shots. And Bordelow can't believe that was an icing call. By his body language, disagreeing with it. Well, the Calder Trophy goes to the Rookie of the Year in the National Hockey League. And right now, there's a few guys in the running, no question about it. But one of them is Nathan McKinnon. You look where he sits right now. Shots on goal, I think, Mike. That's something to really keep an eye on. A lot of times, young guys just don't shoot the puck enough. And McKinnon is starting to mount, like, night after night. Three, four, five shots on goal. And there's a big key. And eventually, they're going to start going. Well, because you overshoot. Shots. You overshoot when you're young. You, you know, you're thinking, oh, these goalies are so big. They're so great. And they are. But even a couple of times, you've seen it. it if he just takes that extra second, it's wide open. Fast through center ice. Fenceman Plesler comes into the zone, but proceeded over the line. The Coyotes are offside. We'll be back. The Avalanche in Phoenix with a goal on the power play from John Mitchell. They've got the lead. It's 1-0 Avalanche. Some great faces, some great players. You look at Shane Doan, Lidstrom, Madonna, Sackett, Bork. Eiserman, all players that played for the same franchise at least 18 years, as Shane Doan is doing this year, Mike. Now, Madonna and Bork are the only two on that list that moved on to other clubs. Madonna played for Detroit. Of course, Ray Bork, we all knew, played for the Colorado Avalanche. But Shane Doan has been such a foundation player. Maybe, you know, not, maybe not necessarily a franchise player, but the foundation of what is right about this franchise. He's had his opportunities to go. And he's elected to stay through all the problems they've had here in Phoenix. But now new ownership. Shot by Plesla. Blocks. And the Coyotes feel they're on the right path now to really solidifying things in this community. Behind the slot with the shot. And that gets tipped up in the net and out of play. Okay, shots right now. 20-11 for Phoenix. What's good about that? The Avalanche are 8-1 and one when they have been outshot. And the second thing, Mike, the Avalanche 
have not given up the lead one time all season. That's an amazing statistic. They have not given up a lead. It's not, the lead has not turned over to the other club once all year. It's phenomenal, really. Handel taking the draw against Daphne. Benoit put it behind the net. Turned around the boards. Morris holds it in. The hit shot. Oh, that got up into the face of Benoit. He went down to the ice and back up. But that puck deflected to the face of Andre Benoit. He is hustling off the ice to get to the Avalanche bench as the puck is iced by Colorado. Now you can see Matt Sokolowski, the head trainer, and uh, he's going to be an immediate walk down the uh, tunnel towards the Avalanche locker room for Andre Benoit. He, make, he did the one thing that gives you some hope that it's maybe just in the facial area, not in the eye or whatever. He was mad when it was over, and he threw his glove as he went down the runway. And during this course situation, Mike, you can replace, obviously, a player that is hurt. Benoit was supposed to stay on the ice as for an icing. Yandel. Nasty, took it away. Lift it out in the center. It'll bounce. For bottom for Phoenix. Sends the puck across. Yandel. And the puck is shot in. Stopped behind the net by Varlamov. Turns it around the wall. Coyotes get it back. For bottom flicks the puck for Handel. Handle centers, Verbata turns and shoots, and that one went off of the old tenor Semyon Varlamov and went wide. Pass to center ice. Barry jumping up, Barry shot. It got tipped by Stone, and the puck has gone out of play. But that's Tyson Barry jumping up, getting something going offensively. Now the, the puck's in the corner, and he is able to jump up, read the play, and help the Avalanche get out of the zone. Good read by Tyson Barry on this play. In the middle of the ice, comes across. That's exactly what the coaches are asking of him. Jump up into the play when you get the opportunity. And two assists against Chicago. Stays in the lineup for tonight's game against Phoenix. Behind the net, McKinnon. Let it come around the boards. Landeskog. McKinnon. Shot gets blocked. Turn back. Shot by McKinnon goes wide. Peter, I gotta ask you that play behind the net. Did McKinnon fake it? Yes. Or did he miss? He faked it. Absolutely he faked it. Two center rights. Stone dragging the puck, but it's fouled up. Pass across. Intercepted. O'Reilly. Up by four McKinnon. Flicked it behind him for O'Reilly. Fends off a challenge. Moves the puck behind the net. The run block. Got it back for the Coyotes. Around the board for Ribeiro. Going to chop it past to Johnson. Johnson read that one well. Did not allow that puck to get by him. Bouncer along the far side wall. 10.45 to play in the second period. Perhaps lead at 1-0. John Mitchell's first power play goal of the season. Coming early in this period. And the puck is tied up long enough against the board, so we'll have a face-off. Well, here's an interesting number for Mike Smith this season. There have been six games where a goaltender has faced 50 shots. And Michael, look at this, 40-plus times. Since 2011-2012, he has faced 14, only Miller of Buffalo. And Buffalo has been a much, you know, a club a lot looser defensively than this Phoenix club. Well, the Avalanche have been able to get one by him tonight. Bodker to the red line. Pass down the boards. Behind the net for Bodker. To the point. Shot. That one hit. Varlom off and goes wide. Portolo for the Avalanche. That one skimmed free between the circles, still bouncing around. Side of that, Barry's got it. Ripped it around the boards. Klesler had pinched in. Puck slides along for Met. Checked by Malone. Comes free. 
Bounced out to center ice. Right up, right up, right up. Pass to Klesla. Ice! Sends the puck ahead. Malone will take it for the Avalanche. Fires the pass for Barry. Reverse back around. 9.40 left in our second period. And still holding that one nothing lead. Referee encouraging the players to get that puck going and finally does come free for Malone. Off the boards, one-on-one -on -one Talbot with Yandel. And Yandel broke it up. Talbot stays with it. Slapped it out in front. Bouncing puck. Coyotes have it. Paul Bissonette skates to center. Across the red line, he'll shoot the puck in. Starts pass. Towards McLeod. Cut off by Bissonette. Then... Bumped out to center ice. Yandel from the red line. Finds Hansel. Checked against the boards by Schlark. And uh, we got a whistle. Play is stopped here in our second period. John Mitchell with a power play goal earlier in this period. 1-0 Colorado. All right, thanks very much. I sure appreciate it, Todd. And here's what's coming up for the Avalanche here this month. Day off tomorrow, the Avalanche practice in L.A. There's a, a afternoon basketball game, then they play the L.A. Kings tomorrow night, I mean, their Saturday night, so it's going to be an interesting time in L.A. You okay, Peter? Yeah, I'm getting All there. right, sound good. <laughs> Hang in there, man. <laughs> there it into by Gennon. Shot. Bounce off the glass behind the net. Pass to Stastny. Oh, what a save for Mike Smith. Great save, robbing Paul Stastny. In watching Smith over the years, Mike, what I've noticed is he plays very deep. He's a huge man. He takes advantage of that size, and he'll play deep in the net. It gives him an extra second to make this kind of move. Look how deep he is in the blue. He is all the way back on the goal line for that save. Well, that's how he's been playing lately for this Phoenix team and why they have won eight in a row here at home. And you can see how good he's been against Colorado in his career. Eight, one, and two against the Avalanche. And this Phoenix team is a club. Peter, eight games in a row without losing in regulation to the Avalanche the last four seasons here in this building. Yeah, this has not been a good building for the Avalanche. There's no question. Well, in the last four years, for sure. Barlamov covers the puck. We'll have a face-off in the Colorado zone. But Mike, look at the shots. 25-12 right now for Phoenix over the Avalanche. They're really starting to add up. Once again, Barlamov is just he's, oh. he's doing the job. Ekman Larson wound up for the shot. And sends it around the boards. The puck comes free. O'Reilly's got it. His pass is going to be a penalty. McKinnon draws the penalty. Now, Vermette saying that was a dive. You could try to get the uh, call along with the tripping to be a diving call on McKinnon, but I think we're just going to see the one penalty on Vermette for tripping. Phoenix number 50 minor penalty tripping. Now, I have not seen this in McKinnon's game. I don't I don't believe he's a diver. I believe he was pulled down on that play. Vermette saying he was down awful easy. And, and Ekman Larson came over and talked to McKinnon. But I don't think that's what he did. He would much rather have the breakaway. Here's Vermette going, oh. Well, you got to try it. Maybe if you're, you know you're getting called for a penalty. You might as well try to sell the other. McKinnon put the puck behind the net. Now we see this uh, unit of Parento, McKinnon, Mitchell, along with O'Reilly and Benoit. Benoit, big blast, saved by Smith. Rebound sitting there. It's picked up. Now this uh, group scored a power play goal earlier in the period. So the Avalanche are second power play chance here in the second period. One for one tonight. Mitchell getting his first power play goal of the season earlier. Benoit's pass. 
for O'Reilly. Gets it to uh, Parento. Played back to the point for Andre Benoit. On the blue line. Pass to O'Reilly. Cross ice. Shot missed by Parento. Back around. O'Reilly. Nice pass. Mitchell. Benoit had to stretch, but does reel that one in. Side of the net for Parento. To the point. And Benoit had it hop on him. He'll have to go to the neutral zone to get to the puck. Pass across for O'Reilly. One nothing. Favor of the Avalanche. Run through the middle by O'Reilly. Pass over for McGinn. Slammed around. To the point for Johnson. One timer. Saved by Smith. Rebound comes free. And cleared out by the Coyote. 20 seconds left in Vermont's penalty. Pass. Rifled across for Stastny. A dozen seconds remaining on this power play for the Avalanche. To the point for Johnson. Sends it across. Return to Johnson. Goes into the face-off circle. Pass back in the slot for Barry. Vermette's out of the box, so the penalty is over. The Avalanche one for two tonight in the power play. Stastny let it go for Johnson. To the corner from Landeskog. Avalanche with three shots on that power play opportunity. Vermette comes in. Nice move. And then makes a pass, but it comes out in the center. Morris sends it over the line. Ribeiro in the slot. Dome with a blast. And uh, the save by Varlamov. He was in the right spot to make the save. It's still 1-0 Avalanche in the second. Let's see who is in the groove. And uh, Groove Subaru bringing you this. Most games with a point. 13 for Stassi and 13 for Duchesne. That, that's a lot of guys who uh, have put up points in games this year. That, you, there's your core offense right there for the Avalanche. And Stastny with eight goals. He had nine in 40 games last year. It has just been a really good season for Paul Stastny. Twelve points in his last 11 for Stastny. Pass. Doesn't connect for the Coyotes. I'm glad back for it. Shoot to the head. Bounced off of McLeod, back into the Phoenix zone. Sent across to Klesner. Out to center ice. Short little pass brought in by Doan. He's able to squeeze by Hina. Makes the pass to Moss. And the puck is pushed to center by McLeod. Lift it ahead. Towards Doan. Stripped away. Mitchell for the avalanche. He's got the one goal in this game. His shot stopped by Smith. Flicks it down the ice. Trying to hit Doan. Doan will get to it. There's no icing on the play because Doan was ahead. So they let that go. But that all started with Smith making that long pass. O'Reilly for the avalanche into the Phoenix zone. Ekman Larson pushed the puck to center. Cut off by Johnson at the red line. Makes the pass for McKinnon. He moves in. Trying to get by Ekman Larson. Larson stays right with him. Landeskog, pass back to the point, shot, boy, everybody ducking, O'Reilly, hauled down, the pass to back, Benoit shot, and it did! It hit the post, hit the back of Smith, and for Andre Benoit, that will be a goal, that should be his first of the season, I don't think it was tipped on its way in, and the Avalanche have a 2-0 lead over the Phoenix Coyotes, so he got clipped in the face earlier in this period, comes back and clips went off the post and in. That's a hockey period. You get cut, you come back, you get a goal. And for the Avalanche defense, it has been so much better this year offensively. We talked about last game. Like they had, ooh, well, that went right through the arm, right between the arm and body of Landis Gog. See if it's uh, if it went off of uh, Landis Gog, he'll get credit for the goal. If not, what happened uh, on Tuesday. Thought maybe that Benoit had scored his first Avalanche goal, but it, Landis got tipped it and got credit for the goal. We'll see if this one holds up for Benoit's his first Colorado goal. 
for the moment. Yes, it is Benoit getting credit for the goal, coming at 15-50, and O'Reilly with a lone assist. And the Avalanche with a 2-0 lead over the Coyotes, although being outshot 27-16. Kennedy moves his way into the Colorado zone. That's broken up. Pass to center. And still three and a half minutes to go, but the Coyotes lead the NHL in coming from behind in the third period, Peter. Three times. That's the most by any club this year. And this team has been able to score goals. They came into this game with 69 goals this season. That's the third most in the NHL. But Farlamov, once again, just been brilliant. 27 saves in this game, coming off a tremendous performance against Chicago on Tuesday at home. Secure to center, and Stone scores from out in the neutral zone. Oh, my. Long shot beats Farlamov, and the Coyotes get the goal to cut the lead in half. You just don't see that in the NHL very often anymore. No. How did this happen for you? Well, watch the body language of Stone. Is he going to dump it down the wall, and then it goes right over the skate of the defenseman. And watch, this will be a great angle of it right here. Watch right over the skate. And Barley just lost it for a second. And Stone's got a great shot. That's his seventh goal of the year. Now, he has interesting numbers. Seven goals, no assists for a defenseman. But he has that big, hard shot. And if you lose sight of it for a second, you're in trouble. Hockey is such a fascinating game, isn't it, Peter? Time to think all that hard work the Coyotes done around the net, crashing that, doing all that. Arlama turning everything aside, and then they shoot one from outside the blue line. It goes in. It goes in. It's it, again. It's just it's what makes this game so special. Yes. Moments like that. Well, whoa! The Avalanche in control now, seemingly, and th then a funny one turns the whole game right back around. So Stone with the goal. Seventh of the year. Cisco to Chipchura and Bissonette. There's his numbers right there. Seven goals, no assists, for seven points this season. Occasionally you'll see a winger, but very seldom a defenseman with those numbers. Got in around the boards. Cut off. Shot saved by Smith, and he's got it in the glove. 2 11 left to go. Tempers flaring a little bit. McLeod in the middle of things with Shane Doan of the Coyotes. This game being brought to you by our good friends up at the Lodge Casino. It's not only your first choice for winning, it's also your first choice for fun. So here's the scenario. The Avalanche, two goals. Mitchell, Benoit, everything looks like it's in control. Then the long shot by Phoenix, and there's a different feel here in the last two minutes of this period. And not to be obvious, but a two-goal deficit into the third is far different than just that one when a club has confidence like Phoenix does in the third period. Steal by Stastny, makes the pass, shot, and off the post! Way to the near side, oh boy. What a chance for the Avalanche there, but... The iron kept it from going in. Just that little bit of a difference earlier in this period. Benoit's shot hit the post and then banked in. That time it went away. Barry steps up for the Avalanche, cutting in. Centers, and Stastny, but overshot him with the pass. Get it. Flips the puck in. Adams has got to get onside. They'll make a line change as well. That allows a long pass through the neutral zone. Pass comes to center for O'Reilly. He shoots on goal. Save made by Smith. In the corner for Morris. O'Reilly attacks him. Steals the puck. Centering pass. That scan went off a skate. And then comes free. Brought out to center ice by Botker. We're in the final minute of the period. 
Landeskog frees up the puck. Twists in the corner. Puts the law on the boards. Landeskog again with the puck for the Avalanche. Turned it up for O'Reilly. Scramble out at center ice. Hansel. That block. Dumped in by the Avs. 20 seconds to go in the period. Ekman Larson, no rush to start the play. Keep looking up at the clock. 10 seconds left in the period. Makes the pass. And we have run out of time in the second period. Well, what an interesting second period that was. No goals during the first period. Mitchell scores early on the power play. Avs then get a goal from the defenseman Benoit off of the post. And then the late goal from outside in the neutral zone by Michael Stone. And it's a two-to-one game in favor of the Avalanche after two periods in Phoenix. Get ready. Don't go anywhere. Coming up is our Subaru intermission report. That's coming up after the break here on Altitude. Well, the second period turned interesting after a scoreless first period. Avalanche scored the first two goals, but then a late goal on a shot from in the neutral zone by Michael Stone has made it a 2-1 hockey game. And you look at Michael Smith, the goaltender for Phoenix, Peter, and here's a guy, he can change the game because of what he does not just stopping the pucks. Yeah, we showed you his goal, but more important in a game like this, a situation where when he gets the puck, he looks so quickly to move the puck down the ice. There's a pass to Shane Doan on a power play that almost caught the avalanche. Here's another situation where he just quickly throws it up the ice. He has good recognition when it comes to getting the puck and seeing what needs to be done. And here, he just threw that aerial all the way to the other end and allowed Shane Doan to explode into the zone. No icing on the play because Shane Doan was, the, was ahead of the play. But that is something for the Avs, right? You can't shoot that puck in and get lazy when Smith is on the ice because he will burn you. Well, after two periods, the Avalanche, nobody better in the NHL. It can't be any better. You're 13-0. and But for the Coyotes, they're also the best at coming from behind yeah, so to win games. Yeah, so it's a pretty good little battle here. And I think for the Avalanche, the confidence that they have in their ability to keep leads will be a key. Robata brings the puck over the blue line, but he wasn't the first into the zone, so it's offside at Phoenix. Robata saying that, you know, the guy broke my stick in half. What am I supposed to do on that play? Now I've got to go buy another new stick. What am I supposed <laughs> to do? Have to it's costing me a fortune this game here tonight. <laughs> Well, they're waiting for Verbata to come back to the face-off to be getting a new stick. And Hansel will take the draw. Against McKinnon. Barrett twists his way up the boards. And the puck is shot ahead. Landis got on it for the Avalanche. Punched it around. McKinnon. For the abs, plays it back down towards the corner behind the net. Ekman Larson gets away from O'Reilly. Dropped the puck in the corner. Just starting things, third period. Abs up by a goal to start our period. Kennedy moves the puck behind the net for Verbata. Knocked down by Gannon, but somehow hooked the puck in front. And Morris! Oh my goodness, he almost dented the post on that shot. Meanwhile, McKinnon bringing the puck in, dropped it off for Parento down the slot, the pass to Landis, got out in front, and it's underneath. The pads of Smith, it comes free. Shot by Hayda. That gets deflected wide. And Ekman Larson for Phoenix comes out to center ice. Tipped it from center by Moss. Phoenix into the avalanche zone. Johnson just slipped away from Rivero. Quick snap pass to center for Hayda. Got it up ice for Stassi into the slot for the tip by the Coyotes. And swatted back by the Avalanche McGinn. Fires it through the low slot. Up the board, held in by Johnson, cut off by Yandel. And his pass misses everybody. 
And they have waved it off. No, it looked like maybe they're going to wave it off and let it go for see who could get there first, but it was a whistled. Icing is the call. Yeah, you have to wait till they get to the dot before you make the call. But here's that crossboard by Derek Morris, as we talked about. There's been a couple of these. McGinn did it for the Avalanche in that second period, and here's at the other end. Just a nice, solid play by Morris. Like, he really has, I mean, blossomed into a really terrific NHL defenseman is all his years in the National Hockey League. All right, and he's on the puck. It is Derek Morris. With the pass across for Moss. He'll chip the puck into the avalanche zone. Mitchell. Moss falls on top of him. And the puck is worth three. Klinkhammer. Back to the point. Shot misses wide. Battle for the puck along the boards. Hayden trying to get away from a Rob Klinkhammer. Shot by Coyotes. Turn back in front. Scramble, and it is. Oh, how close! Oh, wait a minute. Is it going to? It's not going to count. At least initially here. That was a situation where Lomov makes the save, and he kept going backwards with the puck underneath them. It finally went in. But the referee said no goal. I'll tell you why it's not a goal. It's not when you hear the whistle. It's when he intends to blow the whistle. And that was a second or so ahead. I would imagine that that puck was not in when he intended to blow the whistle. Well, there will have to be a review here. And Dave Jackson, the referee, is coming over to talk to Toronto. Now, here's the puck. It's right underneath Ada. Oh, Mike. I think I, oh. he might it was that under his right pad yes, when he went I, back. I think it I think it was, but again. That, that. Now watch the right pad of Barlamov. Here's the puck. Now it's under. But where is it? See now that one you can't really oh, you have to I guess think. a little bit on that one. You're calling goal up here, are you, Mike? No. No goal. No goal. Oh, I see. What was that point, point forward thing? The tomahawk. You know? You're killing mice up there? Big Atlanta Braves fan. Ah, I see. Well, let's see what the, is decided. So, you make a great point, Peter. The Toronto, you, has, you can't assume. You can't. You have yes. to be able to see the puck in the net. It's, it's almost as if common sense doesn't come nope. into it, per se. Right. You know, common sense might say, well, wait a minute. Of course it's right there. It has to be. There's no other place it could physically be. But unless you see it. Puck was covered. It was first in after the whistle. No goal. After the whistle. There's the key. The whistle was blown. So that was one of those ones, Mike. Well, so here in this third period, Peter, we've seen Derek Morris bent the crossbar with a shot. Yeah. And then Avalanche had the whistle blown before that puck went in. So it's still 2-1 for Colorado. But you're getting a sense of why Phoenix has been a team that's been able to come back and win games yeah. in third periods, especially here at home. They've won eight games in a row on home ice. They're 9-0-1 with a lot of goals scored. For the Avalanche, they do lead this game, two to one. Landeskog's shot deflected wide, chopped up the boards. Vermet takes the pass through the middle, over the line. Moss, oh, he got hit, knocked down by Tyson Berry. Moss back up to his skates with the puck. Makes the pass to Morris. He shoots, and Barlamov clear look at that to make the glove save. Spend your holidays with the Avalanche. You can pick any four games remaining this season. Get your pick of a signed mini helmet by Nathan McKinnon, Gabriel Landeskog, or Matt Duchesne. Packages start at just $90. Go to coloradoavalanche.com for all the information. Now, faceoffs become obviously important in this hockey game, and Phoenix very good on the draw. But Stassi, who's taken so many this year for the Avalanche, comes up big. And they're able to move the puck to center. Coyotes on it. Halpert makes the handoff. Yandel gives to Morris. And that is tipped in from center ice. Around the board, the puck goes. 
in the avalanche zone. Coyotes trying to keep possession. Barry, a couple of Coyotes on him, but able to free up the puck. Pushed ahead for Cleese to center ice for Borrello. Smacked away, but followed up by Gennon. Sends it across the neutral zone. Morris steps up and shoots a bouncing puck towards Barlamov. Full cover for another face-off in the avalanche zone. Well, for Semyon Barlamov, of course, and after a goal like that, Mike, that Stone scored in the second period, you're just going to be a little bit more careful those shots being dumped in from the neutral zone. You know, you, you can you can pass it off. You can get in the locker room between the second and third period and say, hey, it was just a funny goal, but you are going to, you know, you were aware of what happened. Handle against Stasty for the faceoff. For Bottom, that will take the draw for the Coyotes. Hands are on it. Johnson pushed the puck free. Parenteau sends it down the boards. And we've got a icing call against the Avalanche. Well, that's one of the ones right there, Michael, where Jamie McGinn got to it first. It would not have been icing, but the referee ruled that because the defensive player was ahead of McGinn by the time they got to the dot, that they were going to blow the whistle. Puck ends up coming into the neutral zone. Pushed ahead by Tim Kennedy. And Parento after it for Colorado. And that puck came free in the slot. Sit back to the point. Run Blatt. Jumps to the corner. Coyotes have got it for Bata. Makes the handoff to Kennedy. Works his way up the boards. Back down for Verbata. Behind the net for Hansel. Johnson trying to slow his progress. Hansel turns, shoots. And deflected behind the net by the goaltender of Varlamov. Verbata. Trying to protect the puck. He does. He centers the shot. Coming in with a point was Flesla with a great opportunity. Mike, the, the Avs got mesmerized by the puck. They were not on their man. Hansel to the point. Ekman Larson scores. No goal. No goal. But it's been waved off. There was you know, a collision. Shane Doan crashing the net. Or was it Doan? Maybe it was Moss. It was Moss. It was Moss who crashed the net. And immediately was waved off. No goal. But there is a little conference going on between the two referees. But the, Mike, once you say that it, this call, you, you can't reverse this. That's just strictly the judgment call that there was interference on the goaltender by Moss. No goal. <laughs> Certainly oh, one of the... Outside. I think that's one of those ones that... They're going to argue that the man was pushed into the goaltender. But if he's in his blue, as Varlamov is right there. You see Moss is working his way across the blue. Now he bumps into Varlamov. But once you start crawling along the blue, as far as being a forward inside the crease, and you bump into a goaltender and knock him down, and sometimes, Mike, when they're outside the crease, they'll let that go. But inside the crease, that is the goaltender's territory. Well, twice in this period, the Coyotes have thought they had the game tying goal, and to see it waved off, and Dave Jackson, the referee, and Dave Tippett, the coach of the Coyotes, are talking. I had a chance to talk with Dave Tippett before tonight's game, Mike, just saying how much things, much calmer everything is around this organization. The fact that everything's settled in, the, con the building, the franchise is going to be here, all of that stuff finally in place for this hockey team. Coyotes again to the Avalanche zone. Mitchell lost his stick. You know, that's a, I oh, think yeah. that they yes. took, somebody grabbed the stick of Mitchell and grabbed it out of his hands. This is now going to be a penalty. Dave Tippett's ears are going to blow off. You get one knock count, on a, you know, a whistle that they thought was in. Then they get one disallowed, and now you're going to get a penalty called on a play at 200 feet from your goal. Phoenix penalty, two-minute minor, holding the stick. Good look at Mike Ribeiro. 
Mike, who came over from the Washington Capitals last year. He was Washington Capitals' second leading scorer last year. He is, but he played with Dave Tippett, and I think that's one of the reasons why they would reached out and they brought him here. And Rivera holding the stick penalty. And this is exactly what the Avalanche need here in the third period. They've been spending too much time in their own zone here in the third, and now they get a chance at the power play, but it's the Coyotes with the puck. Halpert fights his way through. Squashed in the corner. Orlamov sweeps the puck towards McKinnon. Ben Waz got it for the Avalanche. A vice for McKinnon to the red line. Over the line. Slapped around by Mitchell. And Smith sends the puck to center. Hands get it back. Parento. Passed over to O'Reilly. Behind him, McKinnon sneaking his way through. And back to O'Reilly. Side of the net for Parento. Pass over to McKinnon. Parento. Centered. And hopped away. Comes all the way out to center ice. Back to the Avalanche zone. 13 and a half to go in the third period. 2-1 Avalanche. Colorado on the power play. O'Reilly moves the puck around the boards. Cut off by Landeskog. Stolen away. Carried to center by Hansel. Johnson slows him down. Stasty frees up the puck. Gives to Landeskog. And the Avalanche move back to offense on this power play. 30 seconds remaining in the Ribeiro penalty. Halpert. A little help from Hansel. And the puck is cleared out. 20 seconds left in the Ribeiro penalty. And it is a 2-1 game. And what the difference in this game, the Avalanche scored on their power play opportunity. Go check by Moss. As Landeskog trying to get into the Phoenix zone. Johnson. I will try his time running out on the power play. Ribeiro's out of the box. Centered in front. Cut off. No shots on that power play chance for the Avalanche. The center ice, three on two, Coyote for bottom, Moss, and he shot it way wide of the net. Ribeiro threw it behind the net for Moss to take. And a poke check away from Ekman Larson by Johnson. Nice play for Eric Johnson. Smith fires it ahead for bottom. Couldn't handle the pass from the goaltender. And there's a play we talked about. You've seen that Phoenix Coyote as a group of five heading up the ice. When Smith gets that puck, they're not even coming back. They're just heading up ice. Ribeiro to the point. Big shot by Morris. And a save by Varlamov. There to center. Talbot with McLeod and Mitchell. The give to Mitchell. He shoots, misses. He just has a heavy shot, but that one went wide. Sounds heavy coming off the board. It, doesn't doesn't it? it really does. He's got the uh, first goal in tonight's game. Avalanche lead it 2-1. Mitchell, Benoit scoring the second period for Colorado. A late goal from Michael Stone of the Coyotes. Made it 2-1. to one. Ribeiro's pass. And then Yandel. To the point. Shot! And that one went off the glove of Barlamov. Stone muscling his way behind the net. Makes the pass. Bouncing puck in front of the Avalanche net. Benoit's got it. Off the boards and out. Stone takes it back to the Coyotes. Makes the pass. Carried in Ekman Larson. He shoots. Deflected wide by Benoit. Malone for the air. Pushed the puck free. Scooped around. Benoit for Colorado. Did get it out of the zone. Beckman Larson. Being challenged. Put it off the boards, but Malone steals it away for the Avalanche. Comes behind the net. Threw it out in front. Stopped by Smith. And the puck comes free. 10.30 left to go in the third. Nice shift for Brad Malone out there for the Avalanche, getting a lot of confidence from Patrick Waugh. Stasty broke up the pass by the Coyotes. Sends it back in. Smith would just set it. Ekman Larson to center. His pass deflected by McGinn of the Avs and Verbata. Lays it down the boards. Kennedy trying to get to the front of the net. He did. The puck came free into the crease. Reverse back behind the net. To the corner in the slot. Shot by Verbata goes wide. Coyotes get to the puck behind the net. It is Kennedy. 
circling, threw it out in front, stopped by Varlamov. Hansel out of the corner, back to the point. Shot, dropped in front of the net. Boy, the Coyotes just keep on coming, don't they? And the defenseman really pushing the play, coming down the boards. Kennedy, out in front, stopped by Varlamov, and then the puck is lifted, it's in. And that one will count. It is a 2-2 two, two game. You can just feel it coming from Phoenix. They were relentless. And their defensemen were a big part of it. Keeping the puck in the zone, circling down low. And Hansel, who had a goal and three assists last game against Tampa Bay, comes up with a big. But this one takes the frustration away a little bit for Phoenix. You could just see that they were getting frustrated with their not their inability to beat Varlamov. And Mike, it was a funny play. It hit off the side of the net, and then it keeps going. Give Kennedy a lot of credit there. He stayed with that puck, and he kept the puck moving, and Hansel finally puts it home. He stayed with it, stayed with it. Got knocked down, but stays with it. And Hansel, good hands in close. Oh, Hansel gets the goal. And the Phoenix Coyotes have tied it up. Two to two here in the third period. Let's look at the Kia scoring summary. Goal by Hansel. That's 10 47th of the season for Hansel. Kennedy, Klesler get the assist. And there's your Kia scoring summary. Two to two hockey game. Pass to center ice off the skate of Botker. Varlamov will cover. And we'll take a timeout. Here in Phoenix, the Coyotes coming on strong in the third period. They get the goal, and it's now 2-2 here in the third. Stevenson Automotive bringing you Did You Know? All right, which of the following players did not play for the Winnipeg Jets before moving to Arizona? And we gave you a list, and Jeremy Roenick out of that list, the one who did not play up in Winnipeg. Congratulations, he, Adam. You knew the correct answer. But he did come from Chicago to Phoenix for a good part of his career. Well, we've got a 2-2 hockey game. Coyotes with 39 shots in this game. A chance by Rivero to flex one. Moss. For the Coyotes, handoff for Rivero. His shot on goal. Varlamov makes the save. Batted to the corner. Talbot sends it. On its edge, down the ice, no ice, waved off. Flesler assisted on the game-tying goal. Puts the puck to center, off and Verbata. Verbata's got it. He knocks it down, backhander goes wide. He was fourth by Johnson in the Avalanche. It's going to be a penalty. It's going to be on the Avalanche. The late call on Colorado. The puck is touched by O'Reilly. And so Phoenix will have their third power play chance of the game coming up. And all the momentum now going Colorado towards eight, Phoenix. This will be a huge penalty kill for the Avalanche. And you'll have to do it without one of your better penalty yep. killers, John Hader. John Hader has had more time killing penalties this year than any Avalanche player. There you see Jan Hayden in the penalty box for the Avalanche. And power play number three for the Coyotes. They're 0 for 2 tonight. The time of the penalty at 12.09. Hooking the penalty on Hayden. Nando slaps the puck in. Rubata after. Back to the point for Ekman Larson. He gives the puck. To Botker. Kel Botker, Ekman Larson, Yandel, and the pass clipped at center ice by Kleesh. Pass across, offside, Phoenix. Let's see what's on tap for the Avalanche. Here's what's coming up, presented by Coors Lights. Please join us again Saturday. Avalanche will be in Los Angeles to play the Kings. We start our coverage at 8 o'clock. Here on Altitude Sports. Mike, a continuation of this stretch for the Avalanche where they really 
they're going to get a real good idea of what kind of club they have with the games that they, they're playing. Just read that they're expecting that Jonathan Quick is out another month. Yep. What's interesting, Peter, is that I believe by the end of December, you have to say who's going to be on your Olympic team. It's a time. Now, do you go with Quick or not? So just something uh, we can talk about on Saturday. That's going to be an interesting decision. Marlamov certainly for the Russian team. He, he may have sprung past Kravovsky as the number one candidate. And if, where does Smith fit in to all of this? I mean, you know, he, there are so many interesting goaltenders that the teams have sort of, in people's minds, have been picked, but maybe not. And so it's, it is it is fascinating to watch these teams, these, these things and rosters unfold. Have trying to kill a penalty. Mitchell makes the pass for McLeod. Coming wide. Backhander got tipped. And McLeod hustling. Gets to the puck. Turned it back. And the Coyotes move to center ice. 2-2 game. 40 seconds left in the penalty. Doan off the boards. Back for Oliver. Ekman Larson. Yandel slides it across. Back to Ekman Larson. His shot. It's something. And it goes wide of the net. Turned around the boards for Yandel. Pass back. And Ekman Larson had to be smooth to keep that one inside the blue line. It's the pass from Rivero. Got a little room, a little time. 15 seconds left in the penalty. Rivero gets it back inside the circle. Cross ice pass, shot, and Balamov saw that one. Score. And it is three to two for Phoenix. It took a Coyote bounce. The Coyotes get it with four seconds left in the penalty. It is a power play goal for Phoenix. And a team that three times this season has come back to win in the third period have set themselves up now with this lead here in the third. It's going to be a little bit of a lucky break for Phoenix. They'll tell you that they deserve it. The puck hits, bounces straight back off the glass. For Matt right there, but Mike on the other side of it, you can't say that the Coyotes haven't deserved some bounces. It has been a solid third period. They have played very well. Well, they've already had, Peter, 13 shots in this third yeah. period. They have 41 in the game. And they get that power play goal. Landis Scott drills one off of a Smith. And around the board, Barry holds it in. All right, let's give you the uh, scoring summary on that power play goal for the Coyotes. Goal by Vermet. Uh, the scoring summary brought to you by Kia. His sixth of the season and his first power play goal. Shane Doan and uh, Keith Yandel getting the assist. Yandel now with 17 points. Doan also with 17 points. And a power play goal for the Coyotes. Now up to 42 shots in this game. Compared to 23 for the Avalanche. So it's gut check time now for Colorado. And it's taken 21 games, but the first this is the first game in which the Avalanche have had a lead, and the other team has taken a lead. Chase to the corner by Hayden. Played off the glass to center. After at one point in the second period, had a 2-0 advantage. The puck was played with a high stick. So we'll pause. In Arizona, the Coyotes have come from behind. They lead 3-2. Time for our Timberland Hard Hits Highlights. This is what we've seen through this game. It hasn't been kind of a, a hasn't been Peter a rock and sock of no. kind of a game, has it? Absolutely not. There's been action, certainly, and there's some been good work along the wall. A lot of hard work in front of the net for both of these clubs, especially the Avalanche defensemen, doing a nice job of trying to clear things out. But it's been an impressive display, and I, the guys that have impressed me for Phoenix, Mike, have been the defensemen. They have been so active, jumping into the play. Morris, Ekman Larson, Yendel, these are, I mean, these are talented guys. Leslie and Yendel both with points in this game. And Peter, 42 shots for Phoenix. That's the most shots the Avs have given up in a game this season. Previously, you got to go back to October 10th, Detroit at 38. Chicago at 37 on Tuesday. So we've seen now two consecutive games in which there's been a lot of shots. Shot by Parento. 
glanced off of the goaltender Mike Smith. Shot by Johnson, blocked in front. Chance for Parento, but he got poke checked. Morris took it away for Phoenix, and we're down to four minutes remaining. Pass through the middle for Yandel. Comes into the Colorado zone. Slides to three for a barrel. Back to Yandel. His shot bounced off of Gannon. Stone picks up the puck. Poke check. Just off the bench. Klesla onto the ice. Has the puck. Stamps him back. Gives the puck to Runblad. Up ice for Dome. Captain of this Coyote team. Moves behind the net. Sent in front. And deflected away. And Ribeiro on that far post. McLeod puts the puck for Colorado. Into the corner. Mitchell on it for the Avs. Back to the point. Shot by Benoit through some traffic in front of the net. Score! Cody McLeod has tied it up at three. What a play by McLeod. Back to the net, and he hooked that in to tie it up at three. What a great goal for this hockey club. Cody McLeod who picked up his first goal of the season last game. This is back-to-back -back good shifts. Good pressure down low, and McLeod just wheels, turns, and throws it back. And Smith, like, that's a hard puck, puck to read right there. Because he, he, you're curling a backhand, and you have to try to figure out where is the release point. And when he just turns it, and the Avalanche tied this game up. Like you talked about, we're getting down. Three minutes and 14 seconds. The Avalanche have only been in one overtime all season long. Well, he said it was gut check time, and the Avs get the goal from McLeod to tie it up at three. Jesus. There's a chance for Verbata. But Lanniscott came back defensively to help out. Benoit back in to off the boards. Three to three. 250 left to go. McLeod from Benoit and Mitchell to both of Benoit and Mitchell with goals and assists in this game. And it's been in this so-called third line. It's been so impressive for the Avalanche last game and again here tonight. That goal coming at 16-46. Slapped around and a race for the puck into the Colorado zone. Hayda back. Challenged. Bodger. It's hit by Johnson. And pinned against the boards. 2.15 remaining. And that puck worked free. Bodker. Johnson stripped him of the puck. Makes the head man pass to center for McGinn. Back to the Avalanche blue line. Get it right up the middle. Offside. Colorado with exactly two minutes remaining in the period. We'll be back with the last two minutes of regulation. McLeod tying the game up for the Avs, making it 3-3. Introducing your 2013-14 Ram Trucks Avalanche Ice Girls. Ram Trucks, engineered to move heaven and earth. Ramtrucks.com. What an interesting game this has become oh. after nothing happened in the first period. Was, we mentioned the fact that Phoenix was off for four days. Maybe that had a little something to do with it, but did it. The Avalanche got a couple of goals, sort of maybe, you know, and they had the lead. And then that strange one by Stone. No was an ugly word. At Groove Subaru, what do you think you'd want in a hockey game? Including a, what Phoenix thought were some goals, yep. but not allowed. The posts have been hit. The crossbar has been hit. We're tied up at three. A minute and a half to go in the period. Coyotes with the puck in the AM zone. Ribeiro, cross ice pass. Ekman Larson, his pass deflects. McLeod turned the puck to center. 1.15 to go in regulation. Smacked in. Icing. Called on the Coyotes. So the faceoff going down into the Phoenix zone. Hey, if you're looking for a great car, check out the all new Kias. Go to ColoradoKiaDealers.com and you'll find out about their full lineup of high-quality, stylish, dependable vehicles from ColoradoKiaDealers.com. We talked about the Avs one time into overtime. Phoenix Mike has been eight times into overtime. But out of those eight, six have gone to a shootout. Yeah. 
not how it's going right now in the NHL. Yeah, it, it's about two to one if, if they go into the shootout. Last minute here in the third. See if anybody can be a hero in the last uh, seconds. Landis got trying to save made by Smith. Wrap around by O'Reilly. And elects to go back with the pass for Benoit. Behind the net for Landeskog. Poke free. Coyotes. Transition offense. Got in from center ice. Puck travels around the boards. Back to center. Uh, he's going to get a penalty. Hansel yep. with a hit on Benoit. And Hansel's going to get a penalty. And don't forget, you, it, it, this penalty then carries over into the overtime period if we get that point. You talk about, Mike, a selfish penalty. You go back to, remember the pushing and shoving in the second period, Hansel and Benoit? Mm -hmm. Hansel is almost eight inches taller than Benoit. You're down to the last half minute of a hockey game that you've been down 2 nothing in, and he comes flying across and takes a run at a guy right in front of the referee. Now, Hansel is a top flight hockey player, but there's one of the things, Mike, that it, it, all, all a coach can do is shake his head in a situation like that. Avalanche get their fourth power play opportunity. Hansel goes to the penalty box. The charging penalty. 15 seconds to go in regulation. Pass up ice. Landeskog to McGinn. Back to Landeskog. Five seconds to go in the period. Behind the net. Again, it tripped up, but the horn sounds, and for the second time this season, the Avalanche are going to go to overtime. They get a point. We'll be back with overtime from Arizona. Phoenix 3, Colorado 3. Get ready. This should be fun. Overtime coming up next on Altitude. Over time we go, and it's being brought to you by Groove Subaru on Broadway or online at GrooveAuto.com. Here are the records of the Avalanche 1-0 in overtime games this season. For the Coyotes, they're 1-1 in overtime, 4-2 in shootouts. And thanks to Cody McLeod and his late game heroics, we go to overtime. Big play for Patrick Waugh's club. You know, you give up a lead like that, you're being, you know, there's a lot of great stuff going on for Phoenix. McLeod scores, you get that point. Now you can, Mike, now the momentum switches to the Avalanche because they're on the power play. And penalty on Handel for charging in 1932 carries over, so it's four on three for the Avalanche. And Coach Waugh has O'Reilly, Stastny, and Barry out on this uh, power play chance to start the overtime period. Riley going to make a handoff, and Barry has to hustle, try to get the puck away from Halpern, and does make the play. Avalanche, Stastny, nice pass, Landeskog, and he tried to cut across, and he did. He got poke check. Also an injured player, Ekman Larson, screaming at the referee. The Avs that won a game earlier this season in Dallas. Paul Stastny scored a, a late overtime goal to win it for the Avalanche. Pushed to center right for the nice dive by Vermette. Brought back in, 25 seconds remaining in Hansel's penalty. McGinn, shot, sliding, the block made by Moss. Oh, excuse me, it was Flesler who made the block for the Coyotes. Nice play by the defenseman. Cross ice pass for Parento. Pass slowed up by Vermette. Back to Parento. Shot saved by Smith. Bouncing puck. Vermette's got it. Waiting for Hansel to come out of the box. He makes the pass to him. It's one on one with Benoit. Pushed ahead. Marlomov gets the puck first. Turns it around the board. Kipped in by the Coyote. Shot saved made by Marlomov. And he had to be sharp and not allow a rebound, and he did allow it to get away from him. Any sort of rebound, and Hansel's right there. But here's a play at the other end. The Avalanche, their best opportunity. 
You know what happened right there, Mike? If you're Landis Cog, you look up, there's nothing to shoot at. You're thinking, what, where do I go with this puck? So he tried to make the move to the far side, but that was a great look. Great look at how big Smith is. And there's just some good defensive play by Phoenix and just Avalanche. Mike, they had their opportunities. They just couldn't find that puck in that scoring area. Yeah, that chance by Johnson right there, we saw him. Meanwhile, Coach Waugh has called timeout. It was the, ooh, that, that may have been deflected a little bit as it came through. So, Coach Waugh using his timeout with 3.12 left in overtime and the faceoff in the Avalanche zone. You know, it, it's, it's one of those things, Mike, it, it almost goes without saying, but this is a, Inside of this, when you take the top eight clubs and they're all separated by three points coming into the night, this extra point is so big now and deeper into the season. Pass ahead for O'Reilly. What a move! He's in, shot saved by Smith. Three minutes to go in overtime. Morris, pass. Ed for Hansel. He shoots. Well, I'm off. Steer that one away. Hansel. Pass back towards the point. Morris sends a bullet wide of the net. Hayda makes the handoff to O'Reilly. Lifts out the center. Stasty knocked it down, but apparently his stick was too high when he knocked it down. That's the reason for the stop. He doesn't maybe necessarily agree. O'Reilly, just a, a tremendous move. The one thing about O'Reilly, Mike, we talk about, you know, how tricky he is with the stick, but he also keeps that puck a long way away. Once he gets it on the far side of you, there's not much you can do to slow him down. They put the face off at center ice. McKinnon, Landeskog, Johnson, and Benoit are the four out for the Avalanche. Doan, Ribeiro, along with Ekman Larson, and Stone for the Coyotes. Four on four hockey. We're in overtime. 2.15 remaining. Benoit from the point. He's got a goal and assist in this game. Landis Gog. Save made by Smith. And Good. he holds the puck. Good pass. Real nice move. Benoit to Johnson. And before Johnson even got that puck, Mike, he, was, he knew Landis Gog was open on the far side. Snapped it back across through the seam. The Avalanche have been good here in this overtime. They have had some good chances, aided by, of course, the idea that they had that power play, but nice, crisp passing. Coyotes get the puck after the faceoff. Flip behind the net. Pass up ice. Carried in down the wing by Yandel. Challenged by Tyson Berry. Bodker uh, knocked away from him by Gennon. Vermette behind the back pass. And Bodker trying to power his way towards the corner. Pass in the slot. Bounced away from Yandel. And on it is Berry. With Stastny, there's going to be a penalty on Yandel. Shot by Berry. And that deflects off of Smith and out of play. There's going to be another power play yeah. chance here for the Avalanche. And there's lots of time. There's still 95 seconds to go. Just a bad bounce on Yendel. Puck will come out just right here. It just bounces on him. And then he he got the hands. He got the hands. Slowed Barry down just enough. Penalty's called. Slashing penalty at 325. Yendel in the, bell, in the penalty box. And I think we're going to see a timeout from Dave Tippett, the head coach of Phoenix. Back to see Barry on the bench getting a little tension to yeah. the hands from the training staff. One of the things that I've enjoyed in talking to the players is these meetings aren't so much like just Patrick Watt telling them what to do as they are communications amongst the players and the coaches. What do you think? This is what we'd like. Okay, no, is it okay? How about this? And it's it, the players have said it's just different than other coaches they've had in it other situations so it again it's a game 21 
and they're learning more and more about each other. That goal by McLeod, like after blowing a two-goal lead, to be able to get a point at least, and now you got an overtime for the rest of this game. This is, uh, now the game is in the hands of the Avalanche. This is where you need somebody to be that guy for your hockey club. O'Reilly to take the face off. And do so against Vermette. Nobody got tossed, but the puck wasn't dropped there. Now it's finally put down, and the Coyotes are on it. Handle off for slashing at 325 in overtime. Stasty. O'Reilly, Parento, and Benoit. Three forwards and a defenseman for the Avalanche out on this power play. Ekman Larson, Vermette, and Stone for the Coyotes. Parento finds Benoit. Parento, patient with the puck, goes back to Benoit, swings it across. Parento to the Avalanche. Benoit, one timer, had it blocked. Flipped out the center by Vermette. Mike Vermette has been dominant on faceoffs and terrific for this Phoenix club tonight. O'Reilly's pass comes to Parento, cuts across. O'Reilly shoots and scores! And the Avalanche win in overtime. Ryan O'Reilly beating Mike Smith and the Avalanche pick up the two points with an overtime win. And they beat the Coyotes four to three. What a big, big, big goal for the Avalanche. They did not score on their first power play in overtime. And they come back. Mike, we were looking. We said, look for someone to be a hero. And they found their hero in Ryan O'Reilly. He'll pick up his ninth goal of the season. He waits. He snaps it. Mike, it's interesting. I was talking to Jay Eschiger with O'Reilly saying, you know, what is it about his shot? It's a hard shot to read. It's a, he, when he winds up, you're never sure if he's going top shelf, on the ice, but what a big goal for the Avs. All right, we'll wrap things up. Joe O'Reilly's goal at 418 of overtime, and the Avalanche win at 4-3. Final thoughts when we come back in just a moment.